When I was a young woman, one of the very first things I was asked to do is to go and teach a class of children that were between the ages of four and five years old. And in that class of children, there was one little boy who was extremely active and had all kinds of different types of learning disabilities. He'd run around the classroom, he'd be underneath the chairs, he'd be on the table, I'd turn around and he'd be pulling people's hair. He never stopped talking. He was very loud. He was one of those boys that when he arrived and be outside on the bus, when the bus pulled up, before they opened the door, you could hear him inside because he was so loud. He was a challenge. And there were a lot of times that I tried to get him out of my class and bless another classroom with him because he was a challenge and I didn't think he heard anything I had to say. And I remember saying to my superior, I really feel like this is a waste of time and we shouldn't even allow this child. He's distracting, we can't teach the other children, so is it really worthwhile to have him here? And they would say, persist, stick with this child. And there was one particular day when I'd finished teaching a lesson on compassion and, and it was a, a religious lesson, so it was about the prodigal son and how God is our father, that this little boy seemed to get it. And he came up to the front, interrupted the whole class, started hugging me, started crying, started telling me the story about how he didn't have a daddy because his daddy went far away and never came back to see him. I remember him saying, he promised he'd come and get me, but he's never come back. And my mommy, she doesn't want me, so it'd be nice if I could have a daddy. And if we pray, will God be my daddy? We prayed that day, and I thought it was great that he even heard the lesson or understood a little bit of it, chalked it up as a real successful day. He left. That's great. About three days later, I'm in a restaurant, and I hear these two women that I know talking about this little boy. I hear his name and the tragedy that occurred. So I go over and say, hey, I'm that kid's teacher. What happened to him? Well, his mom was having a party, and he was in the way, so she put him outside, and she locked the door. It was winter, and he was cold. So he looked around, this four-year-old little boy, for a warm place. And he found some wrought iron fencing that was leaning against the side of the house, and he went underneath it. And while he was playing, he bumped it, and it fell on him. And he slowly suffocated to death. And that little boy was gone. I didn't eat. I didn't sleep for a while. I called into work. I quit teaching that class. I just felt like so bad because I felt like I'd let that little boy down. Ultimately what I finally came to to be able to get out of that place was a realization that we cannot protect children from life, but we can prepare them for it. This is Pastor Carla Ives, founder of what was first named Reach the Children of the World to what is known now as Heart Cry International. Pastor Ives started traveling and noticing the needs of children around the world training mentors and children in schools, providing them with resources. Oh, but this wasn't enough. I just began to get restless with what we were doing three, four years ago because you can only go into these countries so many times and do this training, do this teaching, and bring these kids, and you bless them, and they have a great school week, or they have great um, classes and lesson and experience, and then you send them back out on the street, and you see them on the street, and that's where they're going to be raped and hurt and abused that night. HeartCry International is a Mount Pleasant, Michigan-based organization where staff and volunteers are trained, equipped, and sent to target nations to establish and further develop existing impact centers that provide Christian schools, feeding centers, orphanages slash children's homes, medical care and health care training, street centers, Christian discipleship, Bible training, and Christian counseling services. Street children is something that most people don't pay attention to. There are up to 150 million street children who live in the streets worldwide. In Uganda alone, there are thousands of children who sleep each night in the streets of Uganda. There are little boys as young as three years old who are living on the streets. Don't you think that a three-year-old deserves to sleep on a soft bed with a pillow rather than using the curb as their pillow? Street children are children who have um, ended up on the streets and literally they live on the streets. They live in wherever they can find lodging for the night. Sometimes I remember this one young man I met and he showed me his home. He carried it in his back pocket. It was a black garbage bag. 
And so when it was raining, he slept under it. And when it wasn't raining, he slept on top of it. But that was everything he had was that little, that's his home. So these street kids are on the street. Sometimes they've run away from an abusive situation. Um, one of the questions we always get asked is, why are you helping these kids when they probably are all just runaways? No, a very small minority is our, our children, boys, girls who've run away because of an abusive situation. Most of these kids are on the streets because they were the oldest child in the family and the parents couldn't handle them anymore. They, they have too many kids. And so you're the oldest. We're putting you out on the street. You have the best chance of survival. We'll see you later. Good luck. And that's the end of the story. Some of them have lost their fathers, their parents, both parents to AIDS. AIDS is wiping out a generation there in Uganda. So it is a big issue. In order to get these boys off the streets, homes were built to house them. In these homes, bunk beds and mattresses are provided for the boys. They're not bad kids. They're just survivors. And they're doing their very best. It's a few years ago, we bought a metal container, a shipping container, and we set it up on the property, and we built these little shelves in it, and we called it a street center. And this is a place where the boys, mostly there were street boys in that area, so when they came in, they could wash, they could take... Uh, wash their clothes, they could take a little bath, they could get dewormed, they could get debuffed, they could get basic medical needs met there. They got fed there. We had a tragedy though. A few weeks ago we had one run away and he got hit by a car. He's dead. That's why we keep doing what we're doing because these kids, they live such a hard life in a hard world and you know when I got the call about the boy I was devastated because I they call me Jaja which means grandma I mean I love these kids but you know I had my cry and then I said okay we, we just got to do more we, we've just got to do more. We've got to come up with a better plan for the older ones now. And we're going to have to do something different than we've done. The plan's working with the younger. Obviously, we need to tweak the plan for the older. That's our whole focus this next year. Because I don't want any more to die. That at least we can help with that. Through all of the devilish things we do. Through all of the devilish things we do. Through all of the devilish things we do. Through all of decided that we would start a sponsorship program so these kids can go to school. It works different in different countries. In Haiti, it helps pay for their schooling and then it also helps pay for the food on the table. Um, food in Haiti is about triple the cost it is here in the U.S. So we use a little bit of that to help say, pay for the food. Of a $30 sponsorship, $0.25 a cent each month to help the child. HeartCry keeps only $5 of your donation to cover postage, wiring funds, yearly updates and pictures, and administrative costs. Your finances will allow the child to attend school by helping pay for his or her tuition, uniforms, and books. It will provide Christian discipleship, one healthy meal each day, and basic health care. Sponsored children do not receive the money directly. This protects your money from being used on other things by family members or friends. It's important. We had one boy when we went to Uganda last summer who uh, the, the headmaster brought to us because he was concerned. He'd heard the other students talking about that this boy was planning to take his life. And he was an older boy. Um, what happens there is that if you're an older child that didn't get to go to school and suddenly you have an opportunity to go to school, but you only test out at kindergarten level, even if you're 15, you're going to be in kindergarten with all these little five-year-olds. It's just the way it's done there. And so, you know, he's in with all these younger kids anyway, but he was willing and he was working hard. But the problem was his parents both died. 
these um, a Muslim family adopted him. They changed his name. They took him in, but they put him in a, a like shed lean-to thing outside the house and basically just used him for slave labor. That's really why they took him in. That happens all the time there. That's why they don't want to come to our house at first. When you say, hey, we're going to give you a home, they're thinking, what kind of labor? What are you going to ask of me if I come? And so he didn't have the money for tuition, and we found out the reason he was going to take his life is he felt like if he couldn't go to school, there was just no reason to even live. There'd be no hope of ever getting out of where he was. So we found out how much it cost. It was $25 was all he owed. So we paid for that, and we got him a sponsor before he left. So he's happy, and he's doing really well. When we brought him in and told him he had a sponsor, he, he fell to his knees, and he just started bawling. And the person, the man that was sponsoring him, was on our team. He just, his heart was so wrapped up with this young man. He just hugged him up and encouraged him. But it's important. 